Well, right. That's an excellent question. I, well, I think it's we're long overdue for sort of a whole of government, comprehensive, 9/11 uh, Commission style review of the U.S.'s really catastrophic response to the coronavirus pandemic. You know, the year before the pandemic came to the United States, the U.S. was ranked the most prepared country in the world for a pandemic. But despite that, you know, we, as you mentioned at the outset, 1.2 million Americans died. We're 5 percent of the world's population. We had 15 percent of the COVID mortality. But the problem is COVID came to the United States in an election year, and now it's an election year. And the most unpopular items for the conservative base, uh, the lockdowns, the school closures, uh, the uh, masking, the vaccine development itself, the vaccine requirements were all promulgated during a Republican administration. So what they've done essentially is use Dr. Fauci as a boogeyman and try and pin all of the unpopular uh, uh, pieces of at least our first and second year of the COVID pandemic on him, not on the uh, ruling uh, Republican administration at the time. Grandmother's dead because of you. According to Dr. Deborah Burks, Donald Trump's own COVID-19 advisor, America unnecessarily lost hundreds of thousands of people because of the recklessness and indifference of Donald Trump and his administration. Now the people who brought you the political big lie, claiming absurdly that Trump won the 2020 election, which he lost by more than 7 million votes, now bring you the medical big lie, making the outlandish claim that Dr. Fauci was responsible for causing COVID-19. Using the select subcommittee as a platform for this disinformation, House Republicans now find themselves in the familiar position where their own investigation debunks their runaway political rhetoric. Just like the broader committee's impeachment drive proved only that there were no uh, presidential crimes, much less high crimes and misdemeanors attributable to Joe Biden, the investigation of Dr. Fauci shows he is an honorable public servant who has devoted his entire career to the public health and the public interest, and he is not a comic book supervillain. He did not fund research to create the COVID-19 pandemic. He did not lie to Congress about gain-of-function research in Wuhan, and he did not organize a lab leak suppression campaign. Today, Dr. Fauci's testimony, along with the thousands of pages of documents and dozens of closed-door testimony provided to House Republicans as part of the COVID origins investigation, will dispel these hysterical claims and reveal that the people bowing down to a twice-impeached convicted felon who told Americans to inject themselves with bleach now want you to believe not only a big political, a, a big political lie, but a big medical lie, too. I hope... Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Let the record show that the witness answered. Dr. Fauci, under your leadership, the United States health agencies adopted specific policy aims as a single dogmatic truth without the benefit of debate, out of a desire for a single narrative. Dr. Fauci, you once said, if you disagree with me, you disagree with science. Science doesn't belong to any one person. I was never taught that science turns a blind eye to hypotheses. They serve to be proven or disproven. 
and done so with irrefutable facts, if able. It was interesting that you chose not to pursue an aggressive and transparent scientific investigation of both natural spillover and lab leak. We have been investigating both hypotheses. You testified before the select subcommittee in your transcribed interview that the lab leak theory was not a conspiracy theory. You embraced the proximal origin letter. It wasn't necessarily a full peer-reviewed research paper, but you embraced proximal origin letter and you shared it with the public from the White House lawn. You stated during your transcribed interview that you did not review published articles that considered a potential lab leak of COVID-19. This is especially concerning if the works in question were conducted at a more risky and less safe BSL-2 lab. Nevertheless, any dissent from your chosen scientific position was immediately labeled as anti-science. Anything less than complete submission to the mandates could cost you your livelihood, your ability to go into, into public, your child's ability to attend school. Families were thrown off planes and shamed when their two-year-olds struggled to wear a mask. Children with disabilities lost access to therapy that they and their families depended on. Students were out of the classroom and told to attend school remotely, even when the science clearly demonstrated it was safe for them to go back in the classroom. This harmed low-income students the most. And how were single-parent households supposed to teach their own children and work at the same time? Dr. Fauci, you oversaw one of the most invasive regimes of domestic policy the U.S. has ever seen, including mask mandates, school closures, coerced vaccination, social distancing of six feet, and more. We've learned many lessons. Our early fear and confusion was understandable. COVID-19 was clearly a novel virus. Under your leadership, NIAID allowed disgraced characters like Dr. Peter Daszak to use millions in taxpayer dollars to conduct risky gain-of-function experiments in Wuhan, China. The actions of EcoHealth and Dr. Daszak call into question the integrity of NIAID's policies and procedures as a whole, as well as your role, Dr. Fauci, as NIAID's director. You did sign off on his research grant. We need to know why, Dr. David Morins, your direct report for more than two decades, assisted Dr. Daszak in avoiding oversight and scrutiny and said that you were involved. <clears throat> 